Hello everyone. Welcome to Aquastone and Palette Deco 101. I'm glad to see everybody here. Today we are going to cover a couple more Faux FX products. Um, Tuesday, day before yesterday, we did Stucco Lux and we did Luster Stone and we had great results with them. As a matter of fact, I still have some of the boards here and no, I haven't had the chance to pull the tape. I was going to do that a minute ago and then I got sidetracked answering a couple technical questions and as often happens, um, my time for sitting and pulling tape gets eaten up by technical stuff. So this is the Stuco Lux board that um, I was burnishing while everybody was watching. I did another layer on it. Hang on a second. Somebody's got stuff going. I did another layer of that tiger print and you can see how beautiful the shine is. And the reason we have darker spots here and lighter spots here is when I rolled the texture, I'll show it to you this way too, when I rolled the texture on it was a little thicker here, a little thinner here, so it burnishes darker where there's higher rises. So I just thought you'd like to see that, and of course it would look better if I pulled the tape, but I don't think you all want to sit here and watch me pull tape. Um, so the next thing we're going to move on to, now that you saw that, oh, would you like to see the backfill luster stone from the other day? I haven't pulled the tape off of that either, sorry. So I did the two, whoo, almost knocked the camera, crazy. Um, I did the two colors of periwinkle and azure over cobalt blue luster stone, rolled a stamping roller through it, and then I backfilled today with a very tight fill of uh, cobalt. First of all, the picture, uh, the uh, imprint is beautiful on there. And what this does, and I think it's a little tough for the camera to pick it up, but you can see hints of the purple, which is the periwinkle, and highlights of the azure, and it makes it a very subtle pattern going on there. It is super pretty, and of course, the glare from the white makes anything that's metallic look a little ashy. In person, it's much, let's see if I can get it back here and see if you get a little less, a little bit, right, and right around there, you can see sort of the, the depth of the color, but it's hard. You know, anybody who's worked in metallics knows that, oof, I threw the board and it shook the camera. Um, anybody who's worked in metallics knows that metallics are really, really tough. Hi, Rima. Hi, Emily. Hi, Mary. Nice to see you all. It's always nice to have friends amongst the viewers. Um, so, as I was saying, metallics are very hard to photograph, and that means that getting a clear shot for you all to see it here makes it, it doesn't happen. Look, I've got light shining here and here, and it, all it does is make it look super frosty. But that's a good thing to know when you're on a job site or working on a piece of furniture with these products to understand your lighting there because if your lighting's not right, that's gonna go from looking like beautiful, rich metallic to kind of like cheap, frosty eyeshadow. Good to know. Hi, Diane, nice to see you. We're gonna move on to our first products of the day. Um, we're gonna do Palette Deco. And I actually moved myself a little bit from Tuesday so you all can uh, I can get at my stuff a little easier. It does, however, mean I'm gonna be ducking in and out of camera a little bit, just because I have a low table, not a high one, um, and I gotta adjust the camera so you all can see what I'm doing. So first thing I'm gonna do is bring the camera around to the, see the board, and I may have to adjust the light behind my head because I got this nice shadow. Look, we could do, we could do like a profile thing of me. Ooh, that's not that good. Maybe we shouldn't do that. Let me shift the camera, the light a little bit. Does that help? No, that one didn't help. Hang on, I got another light. I think that, well, damn it, that didn't work either. I guess you're just stuck with me. I guess there's, yeah. I'm gonna keep working on this. No, it's just the way, where I am and where the light is. So I'll step back from time to time I know I'm kind of entertaining with watching myself. Look, look, you can see me. No, that's not a reflection, that's just shadow. Ha ha, ha ha ha. So, we're gonna go with Aquastone first. 
Aquastone for those. Aquastone? Yes, I got my Aquastone board. Oh my gosh, it's been one of those days. I gotta tell you, I actually screamed at people, almost screamed at people in the post office today because it was one of those kind of days. So now I'm not even sure which board I'm playing with. So we're working with Aquastone first. Aquastone, great Faux Flex product. Um, as you can see, I use it a lot, so I don't have much left in my bucket. And dries very white, takes pigment, but only up to a certain level because um, it's so white that you're only gonna get light colors out of it. Usually what I do is, if I need to tint it a little bit, I can add a little bit of pigment to it. But if I really need to change the color, I put the product on and I either stain over it or water wash over it or um, run set coat over it. And what it does is it gives me a very nice cementy kind of uh, texture. The aggregate in here I want to say is silica. And, you know, I could be guessing a little bit there, but I seem to remember that silica, my memory is non-existent. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Heather. Um, so I'm taking generous application, troweling it on 100%. Now, if you have outdoor stuff and you want to change it from a smooth look to a more coarse look, this is a great product. And my bucket's kind of old because I do it for a lot of classes and stuff. So I have chunks in it. And you know what you do? Take them, throw them out. Don't worry about them. Sometimes I even leave the chunks in because they will bond. Hi, Lori. And it will not um, cause any problems for what you're doing because it's, it's not going to change the bond. It's just if you don't want a chunk in there. But sometimes when I'm doing really crusty, old-looking finishes, I leave the chunks in because it makes it look more authentic. And the only reason you get chunks, it doesn't come with chunks in it. The only reason you get chunks is if you forget to close your bucket or seal it down to the top of the pla plaster product with um, plastic wrap or press and seal or something along those lines, um, which I obviously did with this bucket. Okay, so I'm putting on a fairly heavy application because I want you to see how opaque this is. This is a dark gray background. Uh, it's uh, charcoal set coat, one of set, uh, Faux Effects newest set coat colors. They got great grays and they have the gravel, which you saw yesterday. And you have the charcoal that you see me working with today. Um, and if you notice, the trowel I'm using is rectangular. It's a Pavan trowel, P-A-V-A-N. And it's made by a company called Atova, A-O-T-O. No, sorry, A-T-O-V-A. Gosh, I knew I was spelling that wrong. I can't spell in trowel, obviously. Um, they're made in Italy. They're much heavier than the penguin trowel you saw me using before, that Japanese trowel. If you look at it, I'll turn it this way so you're not looking at the goo. It's much stiffer, but it has a beautiful beveled edge on it, so um, you can roll the plaster off without leaving sharp edges. Super sturdy. I like it with this product because I like this kind of a trowel with um, anything that's got grit to it because the blade is not as thick. Those Japanese trowels that you saw me using yesterday, they're wonderful. But if you have something that has a little bit of grit to it, it's not a great option because those thin blades can get chewed up by heavier grit product or a really strong, scratchy grit product like there's, there is in Aquastone. Um, can I trowel over concrete? You know, I the answer is... Technically, the answer is yes, you can do anything for anything. Whether it will be successful is a different story. I wouldn't use this to trowel over an exterior concrete around the outside of your pool. However, if you put concrete sealer 
on decorative items or pillars or something like that outside, once the concrete is sealed and 100% encapsulated, this is exterior rated, so you shouldn't have any problem if you put a coat of set coat on it and go right over it. Hi, Julie, nice to see you. I'm Martin. Now, let me, let me clean the goo off my trowel because when you're working, I don't care what product you're working with when you're troweling, always have a wet trowel, a towel to clean off your trowel so you don't build up crud back in here as well as along here. It's, um, first of all, it's a pain to clean off, but also when you're using it, it makes um, drag marks. If stuff starts to dry on the edge of your trowel, you get drag marks through your product. Let me grab a tool. We're gonna do one fun finish with this. Now, most of us finishers know what this is. This is called a Leon Neon or a Neon Leon. I can never get it straight. Yay, Martin's doing Fofex products on sale for Memorial Day weekend. This is a special he runs. If you see products that I'm working with today that you like, absolutely take advantage of this sale because it's worth every penny. Sale starts tomorrow, awesome. And if you didn't get this, oh, this will be entertaining. I did my um, backwards handwriting to make sure I could get that up there. <laughs> oh gosh, well, I know it's right because it's fauxmarketplace.com. Have you ever tried to write backwards? It looks makes your handwriting look like you're a serial killer. fauxmarketplace.com. This is a great place to order. All these special prices and deals you have to order online. Don't call and do it. You want to go and order it online. Thanks, Martin. So again, we're back with the Neon Leon, Martin's specialty product. He created this 20 plus years ago. Anyway, so I've troweled on, yes, I know my shadow. You're going to have to suck up my shadow here. So anyway, hi, Carolyn. I'm going to take my Neon Leon. I've got heavy application of plaster, and you have work time with this. This doesn't set up in a heartbeat, because obviously I've been chatting. I'm going to take my Neon Leon, and I'm going to pounce it into my product. Oh no, I'm making a mess out of all that nice smooth troweling. Well, this is why I didn't care how I troweled it on. Because I'm creating a, a stucco-y kind of finish. I could have rolled it on, and I will demo that in a minute, but I wanted it on thicker. And I can take my trowel and knock it down ever so slightly. Just the weight of the trowel compressing, not even compressing, just moving the high spots down. You can go in all directions, vertically, horizontally, organically. I usually go in a little bit of every direction here. Because what this does is it creates, and I have some kind of skip ripple marks. It's a little hard to see right now. Let's see if I can get you up close without the shadow of the camera. Oh Lord, the two lights give you two shadows. One of these days I'm gonna get this lighting thing straight. But you can see I've got some texture in there. A little hard to see from a distance, I get that. Uh, especially white with a white background and light shining on it. I'm going to clean off the edge of my trowel before I let it sit up, get hard, and ruin it because we have other things to do today. And I'll pull like on Food Network channels. We're going to stick this in the magic oven. Dun, da, da, da. And look, it's magically dry. Yes, I did this yesterday. So I've got this, it's dry. This actually sands, and of course, if it's not my studio, there's not a little piece of leaf stuck on some, something. This product sands really easily. Hi, Tamara. Let me pull this a little closer. I'm gonna take this with a sand block. I think this is 220 grit. And all I'm doing is knocking down any high spot so that uh, as 
let's face it, nobody wants to walk up against a wall if they brush it by accident and have the skin removed. So I take all the high, really any high sharp spots off. And I get my old tape out of the way. And we're gonna have a little fun with some faux cream color on here. This is how you color this product. Let me make sure I can get you a better shot of what I'm doing because I know the lights are a pain in the tuckus here. See, I'm still trying to get these lights so we're getting a little less shadow, but it is just not wanting to work for me today. I need, I need, where are my camera pros around here to help me from doing this silly stuff the wrong way? So I'm gonna take a little eggplant colored aqua cream, I'm sorry, aqua cream, uh, faux cream color. Uh, I'm gonna take, I know, yes, I'm here. <laughs> it's hard to watch me over doing stuff over on a table you can't see. Um, I'm going to take, if I can get it open, a little black. Ooh, that needed to be shaken up, it's a little too wet. black faux cream color and I think I'll take a little asphaltum transoxide now just so anybody who's asking about this faux cream color are some of faux effects colorants for products uh, faux cream color is also a standalone product on its own because it has acrylic binders in it so if you want to use it for mural painting or detail painting, you can absolutely do that. It has acrylic in it, so it doesn't necessarily have to be mixed in with something. Um, and if you're wondering where I'm ducking off to, I have my little table of goodies down here. See, this is, this is how I keep everything organized, and it's still too short for me. So I got some asphaltum transoxide here, and put a little of that on the plate. Oh, I'm so elegant with this. And I have a water cup. I have a chip brush. And I have a little water sprayer. And we're going to do a little water washing. Okay, now I'm gonna set this over to the side so I can actually reach it and not have to hold everything in my hands. Hang on just a second, everybody. This is the day I need a studio assistant again. I keep saying that, and my son's home. You'd think I could get him to be down here and, and doing this sort of thing. So I'm gonna take a very wet chip brush, dip it in, and you can see I'm just sort of smooshing some color, and it soaks in really quickly. And I take a little purple colors eggplant actually and then I dip my black over in here somewhere and that looks pretty awful right now I, I freely admit it it looks horrifying so I have a couple ways I can do this I can take a little water and look if I spritz it like that it starts to bloom and melt and do all sorts of other wonderful things. Or I can take water bucket. I set my plate down over here on my windowsill where I can reach it. I can take my water bucket, dip the brush in. I know purple is sort of a weird choice, but I kind of really love how it goes in here with the browns. work all the colors into the space that I'm working on and then I can come back sorry for my back 
with more water. I think I missed a spot right there. Now, when you're doing water washing, you don't want all of your color to be going right up here at the top and then being flooded down because what happens is then all the color disappears up here and all of it ends up at the bottom and it doesn't like you look like you finished it. So I'm going to take a little more brown here. It's a little purplier than I'm happy with. If I want, I can take a cheesecloth, I can pat it back. I don't have to, I can leave it as it is. Get a little black, more black. I gotta figure out where my black is because my eggplant color, faux cream color is kind of running all over the place. And let's get a little more water going here. And I'm really not paying a whole lot of attention to how I'm doing this. See, it just, I'm letting it be really organic. I can come back and do more of this as I want to. Let's see. I want this to bloom and drip a little more. Now this is get this is starting to get really interesting to me. But I gotta tell you, purple, brown, and black aren't doing anything for me. So what am I gonna do? Hang on. In an ode to my friend Krista Bend, who says everything is better with a little bit of teal. And you know what? She's scary right with that. So I could put it on my plate, or you could be me and I'd stick it in my hand a little bit because my plate's a little too much of a puddle. So let's put a little teal. And wipe it off on your apron. Oh, I am, I am so elegant today. Now I'm going to say right now what I always say to my students, which is don't fall in love with your board. You don't generally have hours and hours to work on a couple square feet, which is very, very true. Um, but here I'm demonstrating and I have a little more time to play. And see all my colors are starting to fade up here a little bit. I want to make sure I get a little more up in there. And because the board is nice and wet, you, wherever I'm tapping the colors into, the colors themselves are blooming a little bit. But I got to make sure they bloom. I don't want to see blobs of dark color on here that um, don't look organic and natural because this is kind of an old, crusty, faded, runny wall. And I love this kind of a look. It's so much fun. Now, when you're doing this on a job, obviously you have a lot of taped off area. You have towels around the edge of your wall. You have tape, a plastic drop over that, and then you have plastic drop attached to the baseboard because the last thing you want to do is pull up the drop cloths and pull up the tapes and see this huge wet mess on your client's carpet and ask me how I know. Oh, it's a good thing my clients love me. Every once in a while, I do something that it's a miracle I get another client. <laughs> that was a long time ago, and I did learn from it. So as you can see, this is really coming to be a very pretty finish. I might put a little more dark down here, but right now everything's got to run a little bit because it's super, super wet. So on job, I could come back and easily move put more in here and that happens all the time like when you're working on a furniture piece with this or you're working on a wall with this 
you let it dry, let it see where everything is, and then you can come back and put more over it. Because again, faux cream colors have acrylic in them, so they're bound on here. They're not going to wash off it once this is dry and get when you get it wet again. That's really a wonderful thing. I also thought I'd share how I use this on furniture, which is going to be a little bit of a swing around for me, so hang on. I'm going to have to check my camera and everything so to make sure that you're seeing it all. If you look down here, you can see a drawer that I've started working on. And I'll look in a second to see if actually I'm seeing it. Yeah, the drawer I'm working on. So how I got here was very simple. I Let me pull this off of here because that's something I'll show you all later. Ooh. <laughs> I have an ugly little dresser in here that I use for storing all kinds of crap. And um, I thought I'd test, I, I went to a, a high-end furniture store and they had dressers with this cement-like look for a thousand dollars. I thought I can figure that out. So I took some aqua stone I, could, I normally I'd put it in a roller pan. Today I've got so little left, I'm just doing it out of the bucket. And a wet, or damp, not wet, damp whiz roller. Rolled it in some product and just rolled it all over the door. door. Now, of course, if I was doing this on a real piece of furniture that I was planning to sell, I'd have everything taped off neatly. That's not happening today. As it is, I, art, I got a manicure yesterday after the blue fiasco of all product on me on Tuesday. And do you think I've put, remember to put gloves on? Um, no. I will before we get to the palette deck up. So I've rolled a generous coating of it on this drawer. I got some on a wrong blade. I'm gonna take my trowel and again, I could leave it like this and do a couple coats and it would be very cool. But again, I want to get a little more, I want a little more product on there, I think. So I'm going to roll it on generously because I want a little bit of a knockdown on here, just like I did on the wall. And I'm going to take my trowel and just lightly, lightly, lightly. knock this down so I have this sort of old crusty finish. Okay, I clean up the edge with my finger because you know that's how we're rolling today. So I've got this really nice knock down texture here. Let me see if I can make the camera zoom. Let's try for that. Can you see that at all? Yeah, you can see it a little. You see I knocked down that texture. And again, it's going to have kind of a, a coarse, cementy feel to it. Let's get it back in camera. And I'm letting that dry. I, had, I did the other one earlier today, so I had plenty of time to let um, this dry. Although it'll probably take the, the colorant a little faster why? Because I'm forcing it dry and it's not cured as much as I would normally allow for it to cure. Hang on just a second. I'm going to get my colors and I'm going to get my water. God only knows what I did with my spray bottle because the second I set something down, it goes missing. Welcome to my world. So I think... For this next one, I am going to skip the purple. I'm going to go with a little as where get the front asphaltum transoxide. little teal and wait over on the other
other side. Verdigris light green. Um, Verdigris is a kit that faux effects sells. There is there are minerals in the faux cream color. Comes in three colors to create a verdigris finish, but I often use it for other things. It just dries ex quite a bit flatter than um, regular faux color, uh, faux cream colors. Uh, I'm gonna wet my brush. I'm gonna just brush some water on here. So I have a kind of a wet surface to work with. I'm not gonna spritz because I don't want it to get this wet that wet. Sometimes you can make a, a, a mess for yourself by getting like furniture pieces just too wet. And look at how nice that's taking that color. And I'm gonna take a little bit of teal. And a little bit of this green. bit so it doesn't grab quite so tight and I think what I really want to hear is a piece of cheesecloth which is happens to just be out of my reach from where I'm sitting right now hang on I either need to grow longer arms or everything needs to come to me on demand kind of like the on-demand thing I don't know about anybody else, but gosh, wouldn't it be nice if everything just showed up when you wanted it, the way you wanted it? Okay, so I've got cheesecloth. Again, this is something sold at the faux marketplace. Uh, and the reason I like this cheesecloth so much is that um, it's all pre-washed. There's no lint in it, and it comes pre-cut, too. So you can do something super soft and light like this, but I think that's awfully light. A little dull. Let me see. I might add a little. I might add a little white to this to kind of get it all a little creamier again. White faux cream color. Oh, these don't always open easily because I use them so much, and I'm not really good about wiping off the cap. Again, that's my studio messiness. I'm sure we all have questionable studio habits. All right, so I'm putting in a little white in here and because it's wet and the white is thin and wet it's getting a nice bloom to it this is building up really pretty I'm really happy with this a little bit of brown Now you don't have to do this as heavily colored as I've done it. You can just do this super subtle and light beige, but I just love like all these colors coming together like this. Plus I like sharing this water wash technique. It's kind of fun. But again, if you don't like it that dark, put some more white in it. You'd be amazed how many finishes are done with chip brushes. Why? Not because you get that smooth surface where you're like looking for a polished lacquer look. It's because they, the bristles get so beat up and splayed apart that it allows you to manipulate stuff in ways that you have a hard time seeing the method of application. You don't want somebody walking into a furniture store or into your gallery or into your booth or into a wall and saying, I can tell how they did that. It's really, really obvious. Now the nice thing is because I've got this on a horizontal like this laying with the top, however I lay my product is however it's going to eventually dry. Uh, let's see, I think I might want a little white in here. I'm kind of just really liking the way the white works with this and it's taking all these other colors and making them really subtle. And let's see if you can see this a little better. I know 
there's terrible glare. Again, that's my lights. But look how pretty that is. That's super, super subtle. Not everybody's choices of colors. I get that. Doesn't have to be. What's not? I almost dumped that and wiped it on my leg. Big mistake. All right, we're gonna go back up and I'm gonna turn around. We're gonna work on palette deco. So give me just a moment. I aimed it at this. I wanted you to see. Great, I, great transform. Thank you so much, Lisa. You know, it, everybody thinks transforming furniture is a little complicated, but actually it's not as hard as it seems. It just, it's a matter of technique and knowing that your product will stay solid. I have to drop this and then I'm going to try to see if I can get the, there we go. I needed to zoom out and that means me sticking my fingers across the camera. And that was fast, 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 fast. So once that dries and it's the color I'm happy with, all I have to do is top coat it. And the only reason I top coat it, not, for, not because the product itself isn't durable, but because it's a piece of furniture and people are gonna handle it and the top coat present, prevents any wear of the thin washes of color from being rubbed off. Okay, so we can see this and that came out fairly well, I think. Um, Personally, I'd put a little more color in it, but I'm okay with that. So the next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna go into palette deco. And I'm gonna teach you a real super easy palette deco finish while I cover uh, the product palette deco with you. Hang on just a second. I gotta throw the boards across the room. Oh, you missed my dangling earrings. You know, I forgot. <laughs> Let me tell you, when I'm starting to yell at people in the post office, the dangling earrings, I just kind of needed to say, let's just get down to the studio and get it done. But I did remember lipstick. So our board next, our next board is gonna be Palette Deco. And I better kick the bucket out of the way here. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do I top coat it with? Well, for furniture, hang on, sorry. For furniture, I would top coat it with Varnish Plus. Varnish Plus is my go-to top coat for furniture. The reason being is that it dry, it has beautiful self-leveling qualities, it dries nice and hard, and it's alcohol resistant, which super, super important. Most top coats that are water-based, I don't know of other top coats that are water-based that are alcohol resistant. This is important because you spray cleaners on something, you spray hairspray around it, somebody spills a glass of wine on it or a cocktail and it can soften your top coat and then the stain can penetrate or it ruins the finish. Varnish Plus, once it's cured, which standard cure on water-based products is 30 days minimum, 30 to 45 days. I like to say 45 days because if you deal with humidity, it's a longer cure. Dry to the touch, and cured are not the same thing. Dry to the touch means literally it's dry to the touch and it'll feel dry, but think of it like pudding. If you get a pudding that has a skim coat on top of it that's dry and you can touch it and it doesn't come out creamy, but underneath it, it's not dried all the way through. It's creamy underneath and the same thing, much thinner is what happens on furniture top coats and furniture products. Um, especially water-based. Now I need to grab my tape so I can tape up the board and I'll grab my product so that we can move on. And I just found the spray bottle I couldn't find before. Right behind something, I put it behind. This is my life every day. I misplace everything. Oh, here we go. I'm not gonna do a fancy tape board. I've already taped off the edges of my board. Um, somebody asked me why I tape the edges of my boards off. Um, because my boards look cleaner for presentation. They're also easier to handle once I pull the tape off if something's not completely cured or even completely dry. I have a dry edge um, to work with. Also for presentation appearance, it looks neater. And that's a big thing. 
you know, when you're showing clients samples, your samples not only have to be pretty samples, but presentations, everything. It's like staging a piece of furniture. Uh, even for furniture, I will tell the people now, I do samples. Um, I don't want anyone to think that I just make this stuff up on a piece of furniture and it goes fine. If I have a really complicated finish that I'm trying to create something I'm not familiar with, or I'm working with a product that I don't get the chance to work with very often, I do samples because it's easier for me to make a mistake on something like this and throw it away than it is for me to make a mistake on a piece of furniture or on a wall. All right, so palette deco, let's see, where was I at? I gotta find my cup palette deco, just one second. That's gold. And okay, this is palette deco. Um, it comes in many colors. This is palette deco metallic pearl. It comes in clear, pearl, gold, silver, copper, bronze, deep metallic navy, rose gold, champagne, I want to say black, white, and red, and maybe blue. I don't remember all of them. Most of the, truly most of what I use is metallic gold, metallic silver, metallic pearl, metallic bronze, and champagne, the navy, the rose gold, and clear. I use a ton of clear. Palette Deco is an interesting product. It's not plaster, it's not paint. It's a unique medium all on its own. Um, for those who do art, it's very similar to gel medium. It has thickness, it's kind of plasticky, it dries shiny, you can apply it super thin, you can build it up thick. And it's interior and exterior rated and dries hard, hard, hard. Now, if you put it on super thick, it's gonna take a while because it has to cure all the way through. Um, it also sticks to everything. And I'm taking my chances. I already have aqua stone on my fingernails, which I know I can get off. But maybe, maybe I'll listen to my own advice and put a glove on. Gloves. Set my palette deco down, put my trowel under my arm. and gloves because palette deco sticks and it's like if I get it on my fingernails and I do it all the time it's like having a brand new manicure because it doesn't scrub off easily uh, yes it does come off don't think if you get it on your hands it'll never come off and be there until the end of time but what it does do is it wants to stay it's super sticky it's, it just wants to be there. Ooh, I dropped it on the floor and I managed to have it land on a lid. That was impressive. I am very clumsy. People who've worked with me in the studios have seen me do some pretty crazy stuff because I get a little clumsy. So let me back this up a little bit so you can see better as I work. So I put a little bit, I put more than I needed on the edge of my trowel. And again, the edge of my trowel, the edge that's going to touch the wall gets the plaster, not in the middle. And I'm gonna take a little bit and scrape it this way. And I'm gonna take a little bit and scrape it that way. I'll wipe a little off my trowel here and there. Now I could leave it as thick as this, and that's you know about an eighth, eighth of an inch thick. But I'm also gonna take it and I can just knock it down and scrape it across and go in all kinds of different directions. I love this kind of fisheye thing that happens here. I think that's a great detail. I could plaster a whole wall smooth with this, but I generally have no need to. I can run embossing rollers through it and have many times. It holds patterns like that beautifully. It stays nice and shiny and metallic-y looking. And 
and the color stays true as it dries. It doesn't, it doesn't change its color as it dries. It dries the same color as you apply it. So if you, if you like this color, also you can tint it. You can tint it with faux cream color. You can tint it with pigments. You can tint it with mica. You can add glitter to it. You can add glass beads to it. And it holds it. It's my go-to to put things like that in so I can have texture and pretty things. All right, so you've seen how I spread this. You've, you've seen, you've seen. Wow, she doesn't speak English good today. Um, this, is, this in itself is a beautiful wall finish. The background color is a uh, set coat taupe and I've put metallic pearl over it and I love that look. But you can also build other colors onto it and let me do my magic switch of a board. Presto changeo, it's dry, and I've also done another layer on it. I have put metallic gold on here too. So you can see how that takes two colors. And again, this is a beautiful finish on its own. But I think. We're going to add one more color. We're going to add, is this good for stencils? It's absolutely spectacular for stencils. And I will be demonstrating it with stencils in just a minute. But I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm trying to show a couple finishes with stuff so you all can see how, what the possibilities are. This is great in a home, in bathrooms and in kitchens because it wears super hard. On furniture, you can use it to apply stencils. You can roll patterns through it. You can put it in kids' furniture because it's going to take a beating and takes it well and still looks pretty. This doesn't even necessarily have to be top coated because it wears that hard. I'm now using a color called Champagne and it's slightly beigey because the gold is pretty gold and the white, uh, the pearl is pretty white. So for a neutral finish, I'm going to take this bit of champagne over it. And it looks like this would take a long time on the wall. It doesn't. I'm going slower so you all can see what I'm doing. what I kind of call a toning layer because unless you wanted it really really super gold that was a lot of gold that was going to be on there and you can put as much or as little of this on as you like um, these always look a little whitish in the container the color dries the same but clearer um, because the base for all of this is could you use this on a black backsplash Absolutely, you can stencil it, you can create a tile out of it, not a problem. It wears hard and it's resistant. It's so resistant to stain, you won't have much problem with this. Although on a backsplash, I will recommend a hard top coat over it anyway, just to protect it. So we create, I've created this really pretty high-end killer, this would be like a killer powder room finish. I've also done this like on a, um, what the hell, I'm forgetting the words. I'm losing my words again today. It's that time of day already. Um, I've done finishes like this on sideboards or what other people call buffets. You can do this on cabinet door insets, both in kitchens and on furniture. Look how pretty that is. I'm very happy. So I'm gonna put this over on the magic drying spot. And we're going to show some stenciling through products. And I'm going to just pull up one of the boards from yesterday. Hang on. Okay, so here is yesterday's Stuco Lux. Um, I have two of them stuck together. Surprise, surprise, I picked them both up. Yeah, that was not the one I wanted. This is yesterday's Lusterstone board, which, by the way, pretty, pretty, pretty. And I have my dragon stencil, which I set down, God only knows where. Oh, there it is. I have a little dragon stencil. 
So I'm going to put this over here. I have given it a quick spray with a 3M spray mount and then I'm going to stencil just some color of stucco, um, a palette deco through it and then I'm going to show you a mix that I created for a client with glitter and show you how that looks. Uh, you painted a round table with black set coat then troweled on bronze metallic deco over it and a medallion. We'll try to find a picture. Thank you, Mary. That sounds beautiful and it wears really, really well. All right, let's just grab some of this. I'm back with my champagne, although eh, I'll go with the champagne. Why not? Because it's a little creamier color and I like that. Now, usually with a small stencil, I'm working with a smaller trowel. This is what I have in my hand right now. And I don't think you all want to wait for me to go chasing around and finding a smaller trowel. I can tape off the edge of this stencil so I have a little less likelihood to bleed everywhere but I'm, or go over the edge of the stencil, but I'm, I'm pretty good with this, so I'll give it a shot. I'm just passing it over, smoothing it over the stencil. Yep, see, I, this is why you, if you have tiny stencils, why you tape your edges. And if you all remember from yesterday, or for, not from yesterday, from Tuesday, from, and from my other videos, um, the reason I use spray mount is not because it stops the bleeding because I seal it on there so tight. It's because it keeps the stencil from shifting, which is one of the major reasons things bleed other than a damaged stencil. And see how pretty that came out? My stencil came out nice and clear. And I'm gonna move this over here. And I'm gonna use some bead uh, mix that I have. Now, my favorite pink client had me do a pink glitter wall for her. And I happen to have, huh, a surprising amount left because it went on better and I needed just less than I expected. So this is mixed into palette deco clear. This doesn't look like much right now. It looks kind of pearly grayish, but that's not actually what it is. When it dries, it's all pink glitter and pink mica and clear glass beads. I took some on my trowel. This is not how I knew it. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Lori and I take it on. Now normally I use a plastic trowel. Why? Because glass beads like to go ping, ping, ping with a metal trowel. Again, the metal trowel is what I have. I am not scraping it, I'm buttering it. I'm smoothing the bead mixture into the stencil and it looks like it takes a lot of product, but what happens is a lot of product gets built up on the outside of the stencil and then every time I take the stencil off and reposition it, I scrape the extra bead mix off and put it back into the container so I don't waste it. And that's how I get this on smooth with no glass beads or glitter drag marks. So let me pull this down, use the one clean corner of my trowel. Yeah, sure, Maury. Let's do that. And it came off really, really pretty. I'm very happy. Now, if you look in the stencil, it kind of clogged up some of the tiny, tiny detail that's on this dragon. It's because the glitter and the glass beads are bigger than the opening for the stencil. So I generally don't do that kind of design over something this fine, but that today's demo, that's what we're gonna do. So, the next thing I have to tell you is as soon as you're done, you go and wash everything. If you have this over the edge of tape, you don't wait until your tape's dry, you pull the tape right away, because if you don't pull the tape with Palette Deco, it becomes a forever part of your finish. I know that that board that's drying behind me, 
I'm gonna have to take an exacto blade to cut that off. I will retape between layers doing that because it's cheaper to retape than it is to fix a wall. Um, where do I buy my glass beads? Uh, I buy my glass beads from a company called Cero Glass, C E R O G L A S S, CeroGlass.com. They have minimum orders. Um, most of the colors, if they have the color in stock, it's a minimum five pound order. They run about anywhere from five to ten dollars a pound. And let me see. I've got a bag over here. This is about what a pound bag looks like. Um, if they don't have it in stock, I think the minimum back order amount is a crazy number. So you just have to take your chances. But they always have the clear glass beads in stock, but the minimum order on that is also 10 pounds. And those run at uh, four and change a pound. Um, definitely, you think you're not gonna use them. If you're using them for furniture, see if you can get a friend to help you in. But you'd be amazed when you're doing this on anything large or coating an entire piece of furniture, and I've done it. Um, you can go through five pounds of this stuff with no problem. It's because they don't, you know, it's not like it spreads. You're taking what you have and covering a surface as opaquely as possible. When I put glass beads in my palette deco, I like a bead dense mixture, meaning I want to see more beads than palette deco medium in there. But palette deco is absolutely my go to for troweling uh, texture and gels and I'm um, gels glitter and beads and all of that sort of stuff because it dries the clear dries crystal clear not yellowy and it's one of my favorite 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 things to use i <laughs> martin's martin's always saying to me you're buying more palette deco what the hell do you do with all of that and i'm like i use it okay just keep ordering and let me see can i recommend let me put my glasses back on sorry folks i can't read uh, can I recommend a bead to deco ratio? Um, I would say <laughs> I can easily put um, two pounds in a quart for a really dense mixture. Now, when you put two pounds in a quart, you're not just a quart of product now because you've put created a change in the volume. You've taken the volume of the beads and putting it into the volume of the palette deco. So two pounds into a quart of palette deco gets you um, almost a quart and a half of the palette deco, deco mixture. I did this on a job and I thought I needed for it. It's part of the reason I have quite so much of the pink glitter mix left. Uh, I thought I needed four gallons of product. So I bought four gallons and then I mixed 30 pounds of beads and glitter and stuff into it and all of a sudden I had over five gallons of product because I forgot to take into consideration the displacement that happens. And that's that's old science. That's my old like seventh, eighth grade science. But really what happens is if you think you if you think you of putting a rock in a cup of water, all of a sudden the water level rises and it looks like you have more well you're doing the same thing when you mix palette deco into um, or mix glass beads into palette deco, you're creating more volume of product. Does that help, Randall? Does that, did I make sense with that? I hope so. It is, let me see, what time is it? Oh, we've been, we've been going for about an hour. Is there any questions anybody has besides those I have answered? Have I missed anything? Let me take a second, roll back. Forgive me for uh, sticking my fingers. Thank you, Randall. Uh, do, I love the dragon stencil. Do you remember where I got, I don't. It was a freebie I got somewhere. I want to say maybe, maybe Laser XL, maybe Stencil Ease. It, it came with something, like it was a giveaway with something I got, and I'm trying to think if that's maybe where I got it. But my favorite stencil research source is called StencilSearch.com. It is a, it's like Yahoo for stencils or Google for Yahoo stencils. You just go to that site enter what stencil you want and you'll get all kinds of different online vendors who carry those stencils. 
So I don't have to go through all the vendors I know to find what I want. I have them popping up right there and I can quickly click on it and find what I need. Okay, thank you. Let's see what, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Holy crap. Uh, stencilsearch.com, yes, thank you, Carolyn. And it's one word, www.stencilsearch.com. And Jen, thank you, I appreciate that. Um, I think we've got it covered. We'll come up with more things for next week. Um, I'm actually starting to get a little bit of a sore throat with allergies and stuff going on, so I'm getting to the end of my ability to talk, and God knows, I just never seem to end talking when I'm on the camera with you all, because you always are so exciting. Will I be doing any distressed cabinets live? Well, now that you ask for it, I might be able to come up with something. Uh, I don't keep cabinet doors here, but I will find something that we can do a distressed finish with. I do keep pieces of trim around. I keep uh, flat panels, so I'm more than happy to go flat, work on some distressed furniture. Uh, maybe that should be my next one. That would be old world finishing paint. I can work with that. It gives you nice distressed, and we can talk about a couple other things. The only things I will not teach you and share products of information about uh, the basics for our Faux Effects Gold Label products. Um, for those familiar, not familiar with Gold Label and Silver Label and Faux Effects, 90% of Faux Effects products um, are Silver Label, meaning they're available to anybody whether you've had training or not. Gold Label products require specific training and that's because we don't want you to fail with them. They require some explanation they require some hands-on demonstration so you understand exactly what they're doing. And we don't, we all know what happens if you go and work with something and you can't make the product work, the, the first thing everybody says is the product's no good. And in some cases it's just because you're not familiar with how the product should work and we wanna make sure you have successes. So, um, Mary says, I would love to learn some more about Galaxy Stone. Well, we can do that as well. Galaxy Stone is a very cool product, so I'd be happy to work with that with you. Um, have I also done palette deco with beads outside? Absolutely. As long as what you're working with is exterior stable, it sure does work. Palette deco is exterior safe. Glass beads are exterior safe. The only thing that might not be great outside is if you put glitter in there because not all the dyes that are on glitter are exterior stable, meaning they're not light fast, so your color, the colors in your glitter could change, but anything that is color stable is absolutely fine to use outside, or in palette deco, I should say. Um, I think I made a, I don't, I don't know, did I? I'm sorry, I'm hearing things clunking. My window's open, things are clunking outside. I don't know what's going on. If what you're putting into the palette deco is, ex is stable for outside, then yes, your bead mixture is stable for outside. Glass beads are perfectly, it's glass. The only thing that's gonna break them down outside is if somebody takes a hammer to it. So yes, palette deco and glass beads mixes are stable outside. Colored ones, I'm not, all the colored glass beads I'm not sure about. Uh, I believe the ones that are solvent coated are stable exterior. Uh, I, that would be something to check with Sarah about their colors to make sure they're at, they're light fast to be outside. But I think most of them are. Okay, I think I maybe made sense out of the gibberish I was just saying. Anyway, have a great w uh, week, everybody. It's Memorial Day weekend, so I may push back until Wednesday to do what I normally do on Tuesday, but I don't guarantee it. Uh, never know I might get inspired and just get in here on have had enough barbecue and swimming on Monday so I'll come out in and we'll do a new uh, live on Tuesday have a great day everybody and I'll talk to you later bye